Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 Episode 21. This fight with Yuji, Toto, and Mihiro continues. And I'm filled with a mix of apprehension for Toto. And also absolute unwavering confidence in him and them as a team. Pretty sure there's a butthole in there. Every shot with the two of them is just a masterpiece. Yeah, you mentioned that, but do go on. <laughs> this confidence. Don't get left behind. Oh, it's 5,000 IQ. Oh, what? Set them usually for the final blow? He just, like, yeah, helicopter spun his head off of his body. Part of what hurts about Mihiro and is also awesome is that in the midst of these, like, terrible battles, he's, like, a total clown. Abs, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Strong mind and a strong body. And the fact that he's so giving to Yuji in this fight, too. He's just setting up Yuji for success at his own peril. There you go, Toto. Okay, don't like that. It's all good. It's all part of his plan. He wanted to go into that building and through the hallway and out the other side of the building and falling 50 meters. It's all coming up, Toto. Did you just turn a clothes hanger into a cursed object? There we go. I thought the animators were having trouble. <laughs> it was awesome. That's great and all, but Yuji. I don't like them separated. I don't like this, this lingering moment of glory. I want one of those amulets suddenly. <laughs> Where can I buy one? I want a cool Buddhist necklace I can kiss before doing something awesome. That's what I've been missing in life. I get the feeling though that Mihiro still has some tricks up his sleeve that he's gonna pull out. Why is he so goofy? Yeah, that was a brilliant move actually. But I guess also an act of faith on Toto's part. Hasn't Shibuya suffered enough? And then you hit him with the 109 sign. Iconic. This reminds me of uh, the first My Hero Academia movie. We're missing Toto though, speaking of the All Might connections. That's fine, that's all, that's fine. Falling is fine. Oh, not in, right in his face. There we go. Every shot. Every, what is it about the two of them together that is just, I don't know, transcendent? Speaking of underestimating. Meanwhile, Toto's just chilling. He's warming up. <laughs> Damn, le oh no, learning from Gojo. Yeah, so we're gonna pull things out of his sleeve. Oh no. Oh no, they're on their back foot. Not a moment's hesitation. They're all growing like crazy mid battle. That was so cool. Such a cool shot. Oh my god, he just. Sacrifice his own arm. Oh no, 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 no. Not the amulet. <laughs> oh yeah, and his arm. No, no, no. This is gonna wake Toto up. No, no, stop it. Oh! Faith in Toto. Yeah, 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 faith in Toto. Oh! <laughs> 
Oh yeah, oh no. All part of Toto's plan. You know what would be like the most satisfying thing? Toto being the ultimate big brother ever. Probably the best I've ever seen put to screen. He has shown that he will put everything in his life, his entire energy into creating a, a huge space for Yuji to grow into. That's how unselfish and pure the, the love is from Toto. The greatest personal reward selfishly for him is Yuji to be great. The best possible thing for Yuji and the most satisfying thing would be for Yuji to grow into that space. And wow, does Yuji have an opportunity right now. It's time to pay it back. No. No. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, it's the two of them. The two most important people. <laughs> Even Mahito is blown away by the power. Use it. This is your moment. The fist of... What's her name? Tanaka? Ultimate attack. Please tell me this is real and not a death delusion. I want to enjoy this, but I'm terrified. <laughs> I hope this is real because it's amazing. He used his hand to clap. <laughs> oh my god, that was genius. Yes, thank you. Oh no. I okay, yes, only that. Tell me more about how you're okay. Time to rest? Just resting, we're resting. We need a good rest. Focus. Yeah, 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 there you go. Use it. Fill that space. This is just pure destiny. He's annoying, isn't he? Great. Uh, I've seen better. Okay, alright, that actually is pretty cool. Wow. Wow, what a... What a first half of an episode. His form looks oddly familiar. I think a big part of what makes Toto so special in the show is that it's kind of a two for one because you, you see it from Toto's angle, but you also see the Yuji angle and they're two halves of a whole where Toto is kind of the, the originator, you know, like he is just a human being, he's just a man, but psychologically he pulled himself up from the, the bootstraps to create this inner mental world where he has just everything you could possibly want. He's solved every problem with the exception of how to date Tanaka, which will surely come and sort of having answered all the big questions for himself like what is his purpose who is he what are the things he lacked that he needed to overcome what does he care about you get the feeling that there's no wasted space and that allows for him to perform at his maximal output both physically and mentally with zero loss and he's so big and so expansive that he has spare energy to open that door for Yuji framing is such an important thing just in so many aspects one element of it is the responsibility like recently I got a huge compliment someone told me that something I had done had been of utility to them and what was interesting to observe about my own reaction to it was like it was a really beautiful thing and I was so grateful for it but at the same time it was like a light shining onto my soul that pointed to how much more I could be doing and what it would look like if I like fully unselfishly dove into that head first. And it was terrifying because I kind of know instinctively what it would take and I know it's not easy. Yet I feel that pull and it, it's hard to unsee. But Toto is someone who has the strength, has built that strength that he's unflinching in it. Another element of it that I deeply admire is that he's not doing any of this begrudgingly. Like he's perfectly aligned in what feels right and enjoyment of what he's doing. I get the feeling in all of all of the scenes with him that he's tapped in, he's alive in like this pure joyous energy of exactly what he's doing. And I don't think that's a coincidence. I don't think that's luck. I think that's work. And actually, I, I would say there's probably a link between that sort of focus and like the practice thought and the allusions to his spirituality and perhaps meditation or whatever. I do believe on one hand that you can't should your feelings. Like your feelings just, you know, kind of come up and you don't have precise leverage or torque on it. But what you can do is you can observe your feelings. And the more you observe them, the less you're kind of a slave to them. They are just your your thoughts and your feelings. And gradually, as you practice that higher mind, you, you do develop the leverage on the thoughts so that the thoughts that come up more naturally are more deliberate, more practiced, more determined. Self-narrative is extremely important and it goes perfectly when it's backed up not by delusion, but by really looking at truth and, and action. But then you have the whole Yuji, Yuji side. You have this amazing mentor figure of Toto. This like one once in a lifetime individual who fortunately for you is shining their light on you. And how do you respond? And Yuji is right there. And again, that's like that higher thing, the call of responsibility, the call of, of destiny, of once you feel that that light or that spirit pointed at you, are you able to face it head on? And Yuji is. And he figured something out. He, yeah, this is big. At least he's not as goofy looking. And they were already struggling before. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Classic running towards each other. 
Yeah, there's no way Yuji just like immediately knocked them out. The battle themes this season also have been just crushing it. Was it metal? But he still has the versatility to make weapons. Yuji has like one liter of blood left in his body. Okay. Okay, this is okay. This is okay. Now I'm feeling these these punches. That doesn't yeah, that doesn't feel like it's doing much. He's like a mix of He's like Metal Cell. With a hint of the final boss from Parasite Eve. There was no sorcerer who could do- Oh, his teeth are hanging out! I think you gotta think. I think you gotta think, Yuji. You gotta think. What happened? And for a black flash at will, and then he parted the water. Or not. And there was no one who could unleash a black flash at will. He's like holding B for a, a falcon smash, falcon punch. Oh yeah, multicolored fists. Oh what? He just make the punch off by a moment. Nice. It looks like he's smiling, but it's just mi a missing cheek. He's still going. He just took a little nap. Took a little nap. Sure, sure. Clapping with his stump. Yes. This is the best Black Flash of all time. He was holding B for so long, too. Looks like Mito's blasting off again. Alright, now kill him. It's terrifying. Whoa. Man, which is cold. No beach for you. You get blizzard. Oh, it feels so good to see him cowering. This is so cool. Such a cool choice. Do it. Oh. I'm savoring this moment. Man, yeah, cry. Cry, goof. This could be a whole episode and I wouldn't complain. As long as he actually is finished here. Just don't make any speeches while he recovers. And this is Yuji alone, too. No Toto. Oh no. Oh, come on. Mahito. Long time no see. <laughs> Episode 45, Metamorphosis. Oh, come on! Showing up Xenogear's graph style, last minute. Do you want the power? In most shows, I think that the highest thing is not killing the villain. I mean, not that I'm too torn up about it when villains die, but there's always that risk for the character's soul, where they slip into becoming the enemy that they're fighting. In a way, that's often a, a slight win for the villain in death. Part of villain's power comes from disregarding values and being able to do whatever they want selfishly, but the hero's strength comes from resisting that and doing the harder work of winning while maintaining goodness and virtue. With Mihito, I don't give a crap, partly because of what he's done, but more importantly because he's just like a an evil manifestation of actual evil. There's no redemption for him, right? There's no humanity for him. So just destroy him. Though even in that, there is a little bit of darkness, per perhaps, maybe? It'll have to be borne out to know for sure. For Yuji, kind of hitting that point where it's like, okay, fine, I am, I am just the vehicle of death. My role is just soldier cog in this long battle that may or may not result in a net positive sometime in the future. What makes me less concerned about that, though, is what is behind Yuji. We've seen that it's not just Yuji fighting, he's deeply internalizing the legacy of people who want the best for him and who are trusting him with the future. People who are really decent and good, like Nanami, Toto, Nobara. I think Yuji's conclusion there, while a little bit more darkly tinged, is not too unlike Toto's entrance in this arc, where he gives Yuji what is, I guess, a zoomed out perspective on the fact that they're they're just at war and this is the, the role of a sorcerer. It was never going to be easy and terrible things are going to happen, but that they just do their part and they go in with eyes open knowing the potential costs and the risks, both physical and spiritual. Yet instead of of shying away from that or, or hiding from the truth of it, they embrace it fully. And I think Toto is maybe the fully realized form of that where he's just very, very at peace, very aligned with what he is and what he's doing. And maybe Yuji can get there. Like Yuji's not healed, right? This is not a, an answer. It's not a final form for him. 
he's reeling from the fact that his body was used to annihilate a lot of innocent people and he watched Nanami die. He watched Nobara almost die, but definitely survive. I don't know for sure. I can't really say with any confidence that this is like Yuji's final growth. I don't think it is, but I think it's a step in the right direction, perhaps. Like just from my own experience, I think when I've experienced large moments of growth, it's not initially peaceful or this kind of calm understanding or a deep resolution. It starts with kind of defiance, sometimes anger or rage or sadness or that feeling of me against the world, me against all odds is just what creates the energy to, to push you out of a state that you've outgrown. Once you get far enough into that and explore the territory, your edges soften and you can fully acclimate to it. And it starts to feel right in a way that isn't fueled by bitterness or resentment or pain or whatever. Sometimes you just need to go through an effort stage to get to the next plateau. I think I went through the stage that a lot of people go through where, especially in adolescence, you start to find the, the various contradictions and paradoxes in society and its messaging. And then identifying with that like effort energy, you know, F everything, which of course is not it, that's not the whole thing. You don't want to get stuck there because then you're also still being ruled by something just in opposition to it. But that's energy and maybe it pushes you out long enough where you can get your bearings and take a breath and come to a more harmonious place with, with what you are and what you aren't. I'm hoping that this arc is something like that for Yuji. It's not sunshine and rainbows. It's the life of a, a warrior who lives in the darkness always and has to fight that both externally and internally. The events of, I don't know, the last four or five episodes really put Yuji on the precipice where it, it could have been it for him, obviously physically, but also definitely psychologically. And Toto, with really just a couple words and a well-timed monologue, being the energy to be his backboard, 